Hello, I hope you can hear me and welcome to Talk to the Hand. Um, yeah, we had a bit of a break and we're back. <laughs> so I'm hoping that you can hear me. Uh, 111, if you can hear my dulcet tones over the airways, that would be great. And then um, if you would like to come and speak, with me, raise your hand by clicking on request to speak. Hi, Marco. Hello. Hi, Ahmed. Nice to see you. And Monique's raised her hand, so I'll invite you in, Monique. And I've got the um, sign here, welcome to talk to the hand, so that when people arrive, they know they're in the right place. <laughs> Uh, it's less confusing that way, I hope. So as soon as you join the room, um, new rule, not rule, but new guideline. When you join the room, click on, um, just type MIC when you're in the room, okay? <clears throat> that way I know you've arrived. Because uh, if I'm going to sort of screen share a lot, it gets difficult. So I think Monique has just joined me. Um, Monique, new, new little guideline, when you join the room, if you think you've got mic and everything's working, type MIC. <clears throat> you want to raise your hand, but you think it won't work. Monique, take the mic. Can I hear you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Yay. you. Yay. It's working. Oh, it's working. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Rima's asked to join us too. So, Rima, I'm going to invite you in. Okay, and again, um, when somebody joins the room and they think it's working, type MIC and then I can invite you to say hi. Monique, um, I know you hadn't checked the calendar, so you might not have checked the community either. Did you watch the video? Yeah, I just watched it. So it was... Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> this is something to talk about. <laughs> I was really, and yeah, it was really interesting and I laughed a bit. Yeah. <laughs> good, 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 good. Well, I'd love to do what we used to do, which is share the video live. But as you know, it doesn't work like that anymore. Um, so I'm hoping that this way of doing it, I'll let you know what we're going to watch or talk about or listen to. And then um, when it's necessary, uh, you can watch it before the session and then we can talk. Marco, Rima, can you hear me? Can I hear you? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Excellent. And the same question to you. You might have missed that uh, as Monique was, as you were joining the um, the call. Uh, for those who don't know, when you, as you join the call, you actually lose the connection because you're having to go through the test so you do miss out a little bit on the conversation you can always ask what did i miss <laughs> when you what did I we normally miss? well no we, we normally take the opportunity to talk about you whilst you're yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> i assumed yes <laughs> okay april's also asked to join so april hi hi hello hello <laughs> You can't say hello, hello, April. That's uh, Marco's. <laughs> so, Marco, uh, Rima, my question to you is also the same as I asked Monique. Have you watched the video? Mm, yes. Hey, I am. Blimey, I'm really impressed with you guys. Well, we're going to look at it bit by bit. It's sort of split into five parts in a way. Okay. It lends five. itself to five parts. <laughs> okay. Would you agree? I would say three, but okay, it's up to you. <laughs> okay, why, why three? Go on, funny. Why three? Because they were looking or, yeah, I mean, uh, because of the three options. Of yeah, the play that's play. the main body of the video. Uh -huh, Remember exactly. when we did the storytelling section, uh, sessions? Oh, okay, if it's like that, so then you have like an introduction. That's it! Have a, uh, yeah, like uh, the body of the the something and then the conclusion and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. yeah. I thought three parts as well. And I thought, oh, no, rules of storytelling. Yep. Intro, <laughs> main part, and now we know it's an extra or the sort of uh, denouement or the roundup or the <laughs> exploration at the end. And it does take the rules of storytelling quite well, this video. 
because it has an intro. It tells you what they're going to do. You get an introduction to the people and then you get the three main parts, which is the three, what were they testing? What were they looking at? Three different things. Rima. Hi, April. Just type MIC. Can you hear us? Can we hear you? She'll die. Yay. <laughs> and did you watch the video, April? Uh, yes, for me, uh, Foster Freeze. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we were going to come down to the end, but. <laughs> okay, so um, let's sort of discuss the first part of the video. And I liked the video. I mean, um, BuzzFeed is quite good in this respect. It um, takes things quite slowly. And um, the people who do the, the, the actual um, discussion or introduction, they, they speak quite well. Okay, they've got quite clear voices, really. Would you agree? Did you find it easy to understand? Oh, me? No, I was, well, you, I, on, I was just typing. I was just typing that I didn't understand the whole conversation because of that nasal voice. Oh, I hate that. Oh, really? <laughs> what about you, Monique? Did you understand it quite well? Yes. No, I, I, I didn't have to to rewind, so I think that was good. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, and yes, yeah, sorry, Monique, I muted instead of okay. switching my mic on for some reason. Um, no, that's good. So we're one each. What about you, Rima? Do you want to do a tiebreaker? Was it easy to understand or not? Well, I understand. I understood uh, mainly, but some of the words is like opulent Sunday. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Some of the vocabulary, but mainly I am the main idea and yes, a lot of. So you got the gist of it all and you understood most of it. Okay, that's that's good. That's good. Because if, if nobody understood it, then we haven't got much to talk about. <laughs> that's the truth but, but of the Rima, matter. What, have we finished about hippie and hipsters? Um, Are they hippie hipsters? Um, ah, well, these three of them brings this in a little bit. No, we haven't finished about okay. hippies and hipsters. Uh, sadly, the um, the session I'd planned for that will have to take place next time, just due to uh, just due to time constraints. So this is this is like a little break from them. Okay, but we will be uh, getting back okay. to hipsters next week. In a way, this is a kind of hipster type video. In how times have changed, how perceptions have changed, how what we want out of life has changed. And we're going to actually look at that again next week um, as a generational thing as well, next week or the week after as a generational thing. But no, we'll, we'll be looking at hipsters again next week, but at the moment I'm not on the right computer for that. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. okay, good. I, I need to get a proper server set up so I can share files between different computers because when one goes wrong, if it's got the files on it, I can't get them. And I'm like, oh, what am I going to do today? I know. I'll go to my saved videos. That will save the day. <laughs> but in some ways, these guys are a little bit sort of, uh, especially the guy at the back who's doing the oh, Adam, Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought that, that that's the trick. <laughs> <laughs> no trick, no trick. <laughs> Okay, so the first part of the video, they're kind of introducing the idea of what they're going to be doing with us, yeah? And what's the setting? What setting are they in? Could you repeat, Lina? Yeah, at the beginning of the video, what is the setting for the video? <laughs> how video begins yeah where where is the setting okay. you mean the scenario right this yeah the um when you talk about the setting 
Yeah, where are they? At the beginning of the video. Hello, kinda. They are on the street? No, they are not on the car. In the car, mm. no. No, no. He is the uh, first guy uh, with uh, uh, put his uh, head uh, through a window. Oh, that uh, sounds uh, painful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but open window. <laughs> ah, yeah, you don't want to put somebody through a window. Now, if you say uh, someone put his head through a window, it sounds like they smashed it through the glass. Okay. Oh, okay. You, might... <laughs> <That's> how... <laughs> you might say he poked his head out of the window. Yeah. He poked his head out of the window yeah that was a little sort of intro at the very beginning and then it moved to the scene in the car kind of one two three is me Traumvelt versus Hermina versus kind of one two three what are you trying to do to me Hermina <laughs> how many names do you need I'm gonna cry now <laughs> okay hi Hermina I'll just send you a little um a little a little message okay okay i'm just checking okay so oh. nope 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 that's not it okay yeah definitely her so uh kinda traum hermina i'm going to invite you in okay Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so then they move to the car, and that's the introduction, the proper introduction. Okay, uh, what's the relationship like between how many people are in the car, first of all, and what are their names? Yep, there are three people in the car. Well done, April, Rima, Monique, Andy, Adam. Um, Steffi, April, Steffi. Stephen, yes, well done, well done. And who are the presenters? So there are two presenters. And those of you who've been doing the vocabulary challenge might see where I'm going with this. <laughs> oh, we got a difference in opinion. Um, kind of, yes, you've joined the room. Have you cleared your cash from last time? You, you should be in the room. Try opening your microphone. Can you hear me, kind of? Can you hear me, Traum? I can hear you, Blin. Oh, there you go. I can hear you too. Can everybody hear? Can everybody hear Traum? Yep, we can hear you. We we can hear you, Traum. Hello, Traum. Blin, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's typing one 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 like mad. It's like yes, 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 we can hear you. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure when when the microphone is off and when on. Now I, I see cloud dot, and that means and that means you can hear me. Is it black? Then you can't hear me. Exactly. You need to have the microphone on as blue. You need to turn it on as blue. It will show if you hover your mouse over it. It will say, if it's on, it will say, turn microphone off. Okay. And if it's off, it will so, say, turn microphone on. But yes, you need, you need to make sure it's highlighted to make sure it's on. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. Um, Traum, did you watch the video? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Good. Why I, am, I didn't do it in, uh, on, uh, on ta in time. So I was a bit late. Because it's oh, like I see. Yeah, 
I'll try to put these up a little bit more quickly. Um, I'll be honest, it was a bit late. I was a bit late putting it up online, to be honest, because I was trying to find something that would tie in a little bit with um, uh, what we were talking about last time and what I want to talk next time and <laughs> trying to do a bit of coordination, just a bit. Okay, so... Um, we're all agreed on three people, but nobody can agree on who the presenters are and who the other guy is, or what his title is. Um, let's see. We've got Stephen and Andy, Stephen and Andrew. And I think everybody's changed their minds, actually. I'm sure somebody had. Oh, Stephen and Adam. Okay. So... I would say Stephen and Andy, okay? They're the presenters. And what is Adam? What, what, what title would you give Adam? Is it the camera man? Yeah, it's a difficult one. He kind of, but because he's not always at the front, is he? If you look at the very beginning scene in the car, He's sitting in the back seat, but they're being filmed from the front. So I'm not sure if he's the cameraman, but he's definitely, how How else could you? Yeah, not in the car. Actually, that's it exactly. Kind of on the back seat. Yeah. So in the car, he's not really the cameraman. What might he be doing? He's got a headset on. So what might he be doing? Yes, it's a field of blue, shiny. Shiny's written blue is occupying this place. It is a field of blue. <laughs> Not a tester. With a headset? We wouldn't call him a tester. Ooh. He gives them advice. Not advices. Advice is always uncountable. It's always singular. He hasn't got any camera though. No, I think they've got a a camera on the front of the car. I think they've got one of those webcams on the front of the car, usually used to film traffic accidents. Not so much a helper, no. I think he's doing the sound. Assistant, maybe. But with that headset on, I think he's doing the sound. Listening to the music instead of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'd call him the sound engineer because he's always looking down at something. He's got something. He's got some kind of equipment. I think he's the sound engineer. I think he's checking the quality of the sound and maybe the quality of the picture too. I'd love to have a sound engineer it would because it would mean that I didn't have all those sessions where my voice doesn't come over. <laughs> As it is, I have to do everything. Camera work, sound engineer teacher. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? But I do, I do think he does some camera work. Now, what this nicely shows is that with a webcam, uh, with a mobile phone and a microphone, anybody can make a video nowadays. It used to be the province of the big boys, people with film equipment. Uh, the closest you could get to it would be as a student if you could borrow the equipment at the university. Nowadays, anybody can do it. You guys could do this. And um, I like watching these, but I think it's much more fun to make your own. <laughs> okay. You need someone to set your hair. <laughs> a beautician to make sure you've got your hair just right. These guys don't bother. <laughs> Mind you, they are young and quite good looking, aren't they? You know, I can't imagine an old part like me being on there. <laughs> okay, so at the beginning, they set the challenge they're facing. Um, which cha what, what is their challenge this week? These guys do more than one, but what's the challenge this week? Yeah, they want to find out what's the best ice cream. What ice cream is the best? And what are they basing the criteria on? It is a challenge, it is. They're challenging the ice cream. The best option, yeah. 
They want to find the best ice cream. They're basing it on price, exactly. I mean, there are lots of different ice creams in the world. So let's just do a quick poll. Um, what's your favourite flavour of ice cream? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Top three vanilla. Shiny, what's your favourite flavour? Chocolate? Okay, good. Rima? Ahmed? Traum? Type um, it up. Um, I'm not sure why, but I can't write it. I write and put it and, and send it, but it doesn't uh, appear. Oh, how strange. Okay. Yeah. Vanilla is, is, I think, so if you tell me, if you tell me, I'll just write it up for you. Okay. Vanilla and uh, coffee ice cream is my, are my favorites. Oh, you want two. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Gyne, <laughs> Gyne's vanilla with hoot chocolate. <laughs> so not, not chocolate flavor with real chocolate. Yeah. With, with good quality chocolate. Is that what you meant, Shiny? Good quality chocolate? Proper chocolate? And when I write vanilla, I mean real vanilla. I don't mean vanilla flavoring, okay? No vanilla flavoring. What's the difference between vanilla and vanilla flavoring? What's the difference between chocolate and chocolate flavoring? Uh, can it be that flavoring is something artificial? It can be, yes. It's chemically reproduced the flavor of vanilla. And you can find flavorings in a lot of the baking areas in supermarkets. And they're very intense flavor, very intense smell, but there's not one drop of the original ingredient in there. It's all chemically reproduced. So when I say vanilla, I mean, uh, I think they mention it towards the end, Madagascan villa, vanilla, Madagascan vanilla, yum. <laughs> Stinky, horrible, other vanilla, yuck. <laughs> yeah, chemical, um, so chemical flavorings, uh, chemical, or as I think, uh, I think it was, um said artificial flavorings. So we're, we're all pretty standard here, vanilla, chocolate, and coffee. I think those three together would make a nice ice cream sundae. <laughs> okay, so um, Rima, what were you writing? Uh, maybe Hermine, Hermine could try to solve the problem to no it's, it's not on that it's um because i had this problem and i just uh, uh clicked to admin and i wrote something to to okay, you I'll allow both, mm -hmm. okay i'll allow both private and public and private messages try it uh try it Traum. try clicking on the side bit and writing mm -hmm. to me Okay, April, take the mic. You wanted to ask Shiny a question. Oh, sorry. No, uh, because Shiny has written... Where was that, Shiny? Uh, she wanted... Or her favorite ice cream was... Where is it, Shiny? I can't find it anymore. Vanilla with hot chocolate. So I said no caviar because in the video. In the clips, okay, you've gone. Uh, Shiny might not have watched that part of the video yet. <laughs> oh, not that, because she has uh, watched the video, I think. I think she was watching it. I think she said she was in the process of watching it. But never mind, doesn't matter. Okay, so in the car at the beginning, they asked, what's your favorite um, 
What's your favorite? Flavor. Flavor, thank you. Sorry, I've got my stupid computer is doing something weird. Okay, so they asked what, what's your favorite flavor? And the reply one of them gave was vanilla. And he, the guy who asked him said, said yeah, I, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Why, why was he, there was, there was a, a slight, it wasn't like I just asked you, what's your, what's your favorite flavor? I was like, oh, right. Oh, interesting. He was more, yeah, I'm not surprised. What was he getting at? And the idea is a little bit of a nuance there as to the reply vanilla. Does anybody know why vanilla might get a strange reaction like that or a sarcastic reaction like that? It's so basic, you know, something like this. Yeah, yeah. When something is vanilla, it's like the basic version. April made me laugh uh, in a private message, I have to admit, but she said, vanilla doesn't like me. <laughs> it had nothing to do with ice cream, though, did it, April? But vanilla is not cheap, actually. So it's it's quite uh, no. expensive. No, but a lot of people use it as an adjective to describe something basic, not, something that's not been changed. Okay, and if somebody says to you, "Oh, yeah, but it's very vanilla," it's a little bit like saying it's a bit meh. Okay, have you ever heard that as a as a an expression used in that way? Any of you? Oh, but it's a bit vanilla. Can, can, <laughs> no? Okay. You'll find it a lot in technology. It's like it's the basic program with no bells and whistles added. It's the basic. So, for example, um, the English magazine is a bit vanilla, to be honest, because it's on the most, Aladdin's complained about it, it's on the most basic template possible, okay, which is very vanilla. <laughs> I don't know what that says about our forum. It's hosted on vanilla. But I think that's what they were getting at when they uh, called it vanilla. It's like, here's your pro, here's the basic and you can build on it. You can make it more as you develop it. You think you heard it once, Traum? Very possibly. You need to know what it's getting at. Doesn't always mean the flavor. It can mean the base. I mean, vanilla ice cream is basic, doesn't mean it's bad, not necessarily bad, but there's been nothing much added to it. No chocolate sauce, no uh, liqueur, no, <laughs> it's just basic, okay? Ah, okay, because in the, my dictionary, I've just found that vanilla is just uh, every days, yeah. every days, but I never, we don't use that uh, uh, adjective in our, language actually it's just english it's <laughs> relatively new it is relatively new and um of course when things are relatively new it means you have to keep up with english i always say to you you're never going to stop learning and this is one of the reasons why you might never stop learning i'm afraid because <laughs> we play with the language okay and uh, when you play with the language, it changes. And when it changes, it means when you hear something and you don't fully understand it, there might be a reason. It's new. Brand spanking new. Why is my computer playing up? Okay, sorry. Oh, no, I don't want it to do that. So I'm trying to multitask here. As I say, being your own sound engineer is never good. <laughs> Okay, so when he says vanilla and the guy goes, yeah, I thought so. And he went, what do you mean? It's like basic. <laughs> That's what he meant. That's why he was being sarcastic. He was making a joke. But he might not have got it. <laughs> okay, so um, the beginning is, as I say, the introdu introduction, the ice cream dream team, as they called it. And Adam is introduced as camera and sound. Okay, so he's a camera and sound engineer. Okay, um, 
And he, he takes exception to this vanilla snarky remark. What does he describe vanilla as? Did you catch that? That's why he was being defensive. Yeah, it's not plain. It's delicious. <laughs> like me. <laughs> okay, I couldn't possibly comment on that. But he basically takes exception to being described as himself being vanilla. Okay. Um, and then they start into their reason for being on this road trip. Okay. And that is to test these three ice creams. So the first ice cream they test, which one was it? Do you mean the flavor or do you mean the price of it? Um, anything you can use to describe it. Okay, Faster Freeze. Yeah, Faster Freeze? No, Foster's Freeze. Not Foster's Freeze, the way you wrote it I, I, either, April. Think genitive. Think possessive. Foster's Freeze. Foster's Freeze, that was the name of the, of the ice bar, ice cream bar. Isn't yeah, it? that was the name of the little shop, Foster's Freeze. Now, what kind of shop is Foster's Freeze, do you think? How would you describe it? What kind of business is it? A manufacturer? Mm, not quite. A not quite. There, will be, there will be a factory somewhere definitely involved in this. Do you think it's a small business, um, owner-owned business, like an imbis? What's an imbis, April? <laughs> She's think... not knowing what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know that, and uh, I know it. Yes, yes. that too. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, Tram knows. Mm -hmm. but explain to Monique and Rima and Ahmed. <laughs> Uh, if this is, is not a real uh, like ice saloon, uh, not really like a, a, a luxe, a little bit luxe uh, um, shops, but it's just uh, sometimes it's just a car, and uh, the other time it's just uh, a, a, a simple uh, shop, a simple uh, snacks like. Uh, on the street, uh, like like uh, the newspaper uh, uh, booth, actually. We can say it, booth, maybe? Um, you could say like a booth that sells newspapers or, uh, it, it, I know what you're getting at, but, uh, and it is a little bit like that because it doesn't just serve ice cream. Does anybody catch what else it serves? It's not just ice oh, cream. Oh yeah, French fries. French fries and on the sign? Think McDonald's. Burgers? Burgers, yeah, burgers. <laughs> it says it on the sign in the video. It says Foster's um, Old Fashion. Oh, my good. Okay, <laughs> which is terrible English. Old Fashioned Freeze. It should be Old Fashioned, but anyway, Old Fashioned Freeze, Ice Milk, and then underneath it's got hung burgers and shakes and the scariest um mascot i've ever seen that would put me it looks like a clown that would put me off <laughs> i wouldn't go in there yeah we wouldn't call it a logo it's more of a mascot um i know what you mean by logo but to me a logo is much simpler than that it's like mcdonald's the golden archers are the logo but the mascot is ronald why, what's it, what's with clowns and mascots? Terrible idea for a mascot. And Foster's Freeze, their mascot is this scary looking ice cream thing with arms and legs. And I would have been terrified of that as a child. <laughs> so yeah, like a little snack bar. Okay, Imbis, we don't use the word Imbis. It's a snack bar, okay? And you've written, um, Monique, you wrote small business and traditional. Now, would you call McDonald's a small traditional business, Monique? Take the mic. McDonald's? No. It's not a small <laughs> Why not? business. It's a, no, I, I wouldn't say it's just a multinational, so it can be. 
but uh, a small business maybe it's just because they've been there for a long time uh, if i uh, understood well so they've been on the market for quite a long time so but i don't know it could be just a, a small business just uh, or something like that okay <laughs> It's difficult with this one because I've never heard before this video, I had never heard of Foster's milk ice, honestly. Um, so I had to do a little bit of um, squeak, sort of um, Googling. Okay. And it's actually a chain. Okay. It's just like McDonald's. It's just you've not heard of it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I know it looks like a little mom and pop store. That's what they call small family owned businesses in America, a mom and pop store. But this was actually set up by um, a guy. If you just Google Foster's Freeze, you'll see that it was set up by a guy called George Foster. That's why you put the apostrophe S because it's his freeze, his idea. And um, yeah, they serve soft serve ice milk and milkshakes which is in, and, and the, he actually, in the video, if you listen again to the video, you'll see, I like their mascot. So this, this little character is their mascot, okay? A mom and pop store. So yeah, it's not really, uh, it gives you a put, appearance of being a small traditional business. And in some ways it is, because probably the woman working there, she's the owner, but she's what we call a franchisee. What do I mean by that? A franchisee. Oh, I know, I know this namely. And yeah. Then I, I, I buy a, a, a product by them. I cannot uh, change it in another shop. They always say we are a franchise shop and we can take it uh, uh, back, the product. It's, it's, and they, they buy, they, buy uh, they sell things from a brand name. Um, but the store is, um, uh, it doesn't belong to this brand name. They just sell the, the products from them or the, by them. Yep. Them. Can you name one of the biggest franchises in history? I think actually, I've already mentioned them once. McDonald's, of course. Yeah, McDonald's. I mean, McDonald's don't own all those restaurants and run all those restaurants with managers. People pay McDonald's to use their name. And it's the same with this Foster's. Okay. I'm sure they've got some um, major places that are owned by the company still. But eventually, this is what a lot of, especially in the food industry, they will franchise out the name. They'll make a name for themselves and then they'll start selling the name. And you have to buy all your products from them, all the raw ingredients from them, and you get all the marketing done by them. But you pay them for the privilege of using their name and their marketing and their horrible mascots. They'd have to pay me to use that mascot, I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> Is it, uh, Lynn, I don't know if you know about, uh, um, is it the franchise? Uh, when uh, you know about Wimbledon, when MK, Don, MK Dons uh, wanted, because Wimbledon uh, played uh, in, uh, in Premier League, in uh, Premier League, uh, um, I don't know how many years ago, and they wanted to like uh, to buy uh, their permissions because they are um, they are uh, when Wimbledon uh, was near bankrupt and uh, MK Don MK Dons played in the I don't know in some low divisions, but they wanted to buy. Uh, Wimbledon's ri uh, rights and to play in uh, some higher division, something like it. Is it franchise? I don't know. If yeah, a company that. can buy, can pay a venue, for example, for the franchise for a particular product. So they were probably looking for the food franchise. Okay, it's not quite the same as buying a franchise from a company, but it's the company buying the franchise for their product so that nobody else can sell any food. It happened during the Olympics. 
and the London Olympics really, really pushed this idea that uh, if we're buying, paying for the food franchise, nobody within a 20 mile radius can sell any food. <laughs> Literally businesses had to close their doors whilst this was happening because um, they demanded it. The, the, they paid so much money for the franchise. There can be a, yeah, there, there are different ki- types of franchises. Exactly, Monique. Yes. Uh, cleaning franchises. Yeah. Where you get the cleaning products. Um, door to door selling is often a franchise. You buy the products, you go down and you try and sell them. Um, it's, you know, Tupperware. What else? Um, makeup. You know, sold on a franchise basis. So it's a, it's a business model, but it covers a lot of different things. What you were talking about is McDonald's trying to buy the food franchise from a major venue, O2 Arena, Wimbledon, um, Wimbledon Tennis. Yeah, it's big money for events and event organizers to make their event spectacularly popular so that people will say, we want to pay you to just set up a stand and sell our stuff. I mean, it's amazing when you think about it. Yep, that's it, exactly. Aldi, yeah, Aldi, a lot of supermarkets, in fact, the smaller ones, department stores as well. Uh, Some department stores sell franchises to smaller organizations to be within those department stores, to have an area to sell their products. So it, it covers lots of different things, okay? Maybe we'll do a session on this idea of franchising. It was meant to be an aside, <laughs> but it's not a mom and pop store. It's actually quite a big business in America, uh, but it hasn't gone international like McDonald's and Burger King and um, all the other ones I can't think of right now, okay? Uber, Uber's different. Uber, hmm, I think it would be a good, yeah, we'll definitely do this. uh, (laughs) We'll do this in another uh, topic. It's a good option if you've got the money and if you've got a good franchise. There are a lot of franchises out there. There are whole franchise markets you can go to. And there's a lot of rubbish out there, truly. Be careful. (laughs) Okay, let's have a look what Rima's written. Hang on. Uh, Milton Keynes Don's Football Club. Wow, Don. <laughs> MK Don's. Never heard of it called that. Okay, Milton, Milton Keynes, the city of concrete cows. Uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, it's a professional association football club based in the town of Milton Keynes, Buckinghamshire. It's a place to be experienced, I tell you. As a result of Wimbledon FC's relocation to Milton Keynes from South London in September 2003, the club officially considers itself to have been founded in 2004 when it adopted its present name, badge and home colours. As of 2016-17 season, its first team plays in League One. Um, is that first league? The third tier of English football. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was... Mm. No, no, it's the Premier Premier League. League. There's a third, third after championship. But, uh, Lynn, what I wanted to say, because Wimbledon, you know, Wimbledon was um, Vinnie Jones and they, I think that they were champion once. Crazy gang, they called them, but they uh, they were near uh, bankrupt uh, and they, like, um, um, this club, Milton Keynes, bought like permissions like as they say like uh, uh, from Wimbledon because um, they got their permissions their um, club uh, I don't know maybe club trophies uh, they actually didn't uh, exist at that time because um, but uh, like uh, maybe got trophies got permissions to uh, to play in uh, higher division than they played before you know what i mean maybe i i don't know how to explain it maybe it's not just a franchise i think that yeah it's it's, it's a license it sounds like licensing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. maybe okay <laughs> it's a, it is a topic uh for another day i think <laughs> but um april just said we definitely have to do a session about football i i agree and rima you've definitely got to run it because <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, you know more about football than I do. <laughs> okay, so um, they went to 
the uh, Foster's milk. In, honestly, I'm not kidding you now when I say milk bar, but that's a very British, almost a Welsh word, a milk bar, um, which is like a snack bar. Okay, and it serves ice cream. And you can still find milk bars in the UK. They're a little old fashioned now, but they're coming back into trend because of the hipsters. <laughs> hipsters like anything that was old and old fashioned. So they are becoming trendy again. Um, and what was the name of the lady who served them in the shop, in the snack bar? Did anybody catch her name? That's just Isabel. Yeah, Isabel Huerta. Whoa, well done. <laughs> Absolutely. It's my um, Spanish, right, uh, uh, Monique? Monique, <laughs> I have to answer you there. Isabel Huerta. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Isabel Huerta. Did anyone catch where this shop is? Because they went to different places to test these ice creams. So where was this shop? Anybody? Los Angeles, I think. Yeah, Los Angeles in LA. Well done. Yes, in LA. Excellent. And it was Isabel and Huerta. <laughs> I didn't dare do that one, but well done. <laughs> and was she the owner? Was she the owner of the shop? Was she the owner of the franchise? It's a manager, I think. Yeah. They, and if you notice, they use the word store manager. Now, you'll notice I say shop a lot. Um, what's the difference between a store and a shop? A store is American and shop is English. Well done. No difference in actually what they do, but store is an American term. Shop is a British term. And as I say, I tend to call that a snack bar. I wouldn't even call it a shop because shops tend to sell things that you take away. And this is a snack bar you, you consume on the premises or just outside in this case. Now, who can describe for me how this particular ice cream is made? How can you, could you describe the process of how she makes the ice cream for the guys? Anybody? The only one I can remember is that they, they don't uh, add eggs. Uh, they use uh, uh, cream, uh, what did they say, cream, uh, whipped cream, no. Um, they, they add Ah, cream, but I, I can't remember the, the name before before you. Okay, okay, don't worry. I'm, I'm talking specifically about the Foster's experience now. Uh, and people love this stuff, by the way. You can actually make your own if you want to. Um, you can find online, you can find copycat, what we call copycat recipes to get that, because they've got a distinctive flavor. Uh, it's a bit like finding the recipe for um coleslaw from kentucky fried chicken <laughs> totally different to any coleslaw anywhere else but you can find copycat recipes and you can find copycat recipes for foster's milk ice as well okay but can anybody describe how it's very specific how she makes that ice cream did anybody catch it it looks a bit disgusting anybody remember that um uh session we did on the yeah. rainbow <laughs> I know. I know would you ever know. forget <laughs> never <laughs> well that's what it reminded me of <laughs> i do apologize if you didn't so see that session but it's become famous in the uh annals of the learning <laughs> network <laughs> The unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Was it porta potty or potty potty yeah. potty something um, or other? I don't know, but yes. But it is. It's not a scoop, is it? It doesn't use a scoop ice for the ice cream. Money. Could how would you describe how she makes the ice cream? Uh, okay. What I remember is uh, she said that the cones are uh, famous there, and 
they mention something of about the perfect shape and she says how she serves the the ice cream in order just to to make that shape uh, perfectly and uh, and they also say something like if um if you don't um it could fall you know and she says no i mean it can but you must uh, do it like a quickly or something like that when she just uh, that's right yeah i me. thought that was very brave as well obviously she's got the skill exactly. So she uses. Uh -huh. And she says like a. Yep. Sorry, she says something like um. Well, while she's uh, uh, serving the the ice cream, she says there is like a little twist in order just to make that. That's right. Shape. Yeah, a little twist to get the twirl at the end. Uh -huh. it, she does do it very. Uh -huh. yeah. You can imagine she's done thousands. She doesn't even think about it while she's doing it. Do you think you'd be able to do that, Monique? It looks quite simple. I tried once, but it was terrible. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, I Honestly, you've you had a go. I've never had a go at one of these machines. We have similar in the UK, similar, not the same. Our, our ones in the UK would be Mr. Whippy, okay? A Mr. Whippy ice cream, that swirly ice cream. Um, and Traum said they do have an ice cream maker. Yeah, it's not just a maker, it's a machine for serving it, okay? And you can actually buy these ice machines, okay? Um, and it uses, it's basically, uh, um, th there is powder involved, shall we put it that way? As far as I know, it's not just you pour milk in one end and ice cream comes the other end, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> But yes, they, they do make this um, swirly ice cream like Mr. It reminded me of Mr. Whippy. So she's got, the, uh, what does she put the ice cream into, by the way? What do you call that container for the ice cream? Oh, I actually, a cone, a cone, a cone. A cone. Brilliant, yes. An ice cream cone. Yeah. A cone. Well done. And then, as Monique said, she does something specific to the ice cream. What does she do? What would you describe that process to cover it in chocolate? Dip it in. Yeah. Yeah. She dips it in chocolate. And they were amazed. They're like, right, oh, how come it doesn't fall off? Just to do it quickly. And you've got to say, you need to know how to do it. You need to know how to do it. So you get this. Um, how did he describe that chocolate coating later? It's a specific word that you wouldn't normally use for chocolate coating. Makes it sound a bit icky. Oh, this is skin. <laughs> a skin for your ice cream. Yuck. <laughs> Anyhow, when they're eating it, what went wrong? What went wrong with his, uh, the process of his eating the ice cream? The chocolate became uh, steady. Um, uh, hard, it froze. Yeah, the chocolate forms a coating on the ice cream and it, it freezes hard, yep. But what went wrong as he was eating the ice cream? Yeah, it, felt it becomes a magnum. Yeah, very like a magnum, isn't it, April? Yeah. Me too. It is a pretty expensive a magnum. <laughs> they are indeed, especially if you've got children. <laughs> yeah, but I like it. It's my, one of my favourite ice creams, Magnums, cold Magnum. Okay, it melts fast, yeah, but he ate something he shouldn't have eaten and the guy gets, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. What went wrong? The liquid wrapped the napkin? Ah, no, Monique's got it. Monique, take okay. the mic. Uh, okay, when uh, he had to, to remove the napkin because he was eating the napkin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so they've obviously wrapped it in the napkin to stop it. As you say, it melts, it dribbles down onto the cone and you get it on your clothes. So they put a napkin there, but he was eating it and he didn't notice the napkin, started eating the napkin. Now, they also talked about something that happens when you eat ice cream. Um, what did they describe? An unpleasant experience that can happen when you eat ice cream. Is it the mandura? Oh, so, no, sorry. Brain. Your brain, when you eat something yeah, that is really cold. Mm, so what do we call it? It's got a special term. An accident? Not an accident, no, no. It's, it's got the word brain in it. Yeah, yeah frozen brain, something like Not that. Not frozen brain, that sounds icky. <laughs> 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 it's, it's cuter than that. Oh, frozen brain, mm, yum. <laughs> Anybody? Did you catch it? Brain, f -f 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 brain freeze. Yeah, frozen brain sounds a little bit like um, Chianti and a liver and... <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some frozen brain? You. <laughs> but brain freeze, it's... Can anybody describe... Has anybody had brain freeze, by the way? Oh, yes. More, more than often when I was a child, Lynn, because I bite it. I didn't um, lick on it. I <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, that's the problem. I, I've never had it. I didn't know it existed. You want to eat? Yes. Shiny yes. And try when the forehead hurts. Yeah. What do we call it when the forehead hurts? We don't say my forehead hurts. Brain freeze. No? Um, what happens when you get brain freeze? We don't say my forehead hurts. We say I've got a. Okay, we call it also an ice cream headache. headache. Yeah, a headache. It gives you a headache. Yeah, and it's a cold stimu stimulate stimulus headache, a trigeminal headache, or sphenopalatine ganglia neuralgia, <laughs> meaning nerve pain of the. Phenopalatine ganglion. <laughs> okay, just a headache. <laughs> a headache, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Much simpler. Sarah, thanks for joining us. Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to join the discussion because the discussion is about to end. I don't know if you've maybe not got the right timing on your... Uh, when you register for a session... It will convert the time to your local time. Just put in your local time at the point of registration and then it will send you the reminder in my time, okay? Sadly, I'm afraid you're a little bit late uh, for today. Now, brain freeze only became um, a phenomena for me. Does anybody know what's made brain freeze kind of not popular. I don't think it could be popular. It's a nasty experience, but uh, more well known. What's made brain freeze well known? Anyone? Have you seen this phenomenon? Man -man -man? It is a phenomena of the web of the internet. Oh, it's okay, Sarah. Don't, no, no, no need to follow. I'm sorry. I'd love to carry on going. But um, as I say, we are a little late. Uh, we've already run over as we normally do, which is fine. Okay. The phenomena I'm talking about is brain freeze videos on YouTube of cats. Now, I don't suggest you do this at home because you shouldn't try to hurt your cat. And the cat will try to eat ice cream. It likes cream. It likes milk. But People do do it and they do video it. Um, so it's up to you whether you want to watch it or not. It is funny, <laughs> but it might not be the kindest thing you have ever seen. <laughs> However, this is Brain Freeze.
poor cat, really. <laughs> oh my god. That's I mean. know. <laughs> yeah. I like that. that is funny. <laughs> It's like they can't resist it. It's like yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Babies do the same. Oh, I think you might call child services if you filmed that shiny. <laughs> maybe I did have, maybe I have experienced brain freeze then. I just can't remember it because it was as a baby. But I've never had that. Ex I've heard, I've had toothache because of ice cream. You know, if you bite in and you've got um, any kind of, so the exposed tooth enamel or yes, thin tooth that's, enamel, that's, that's horrible. That's I didn't, sensitive. Uh, sensitive for teeth, but not for... Sensitive teeth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly as you said, Lynn, but not <laughs> brain freeze. You've not had brain freeze either. No, it looks kind of fun the way the cats show it. <laughs> but trams had brain freeze, so... you No, don't, Sarah, don't. <laughs> If you do video it and put it on YouTube for us. <laughs> I don't think the cats suffer from it uh, particularly because they do keep going back to the ice cream. So um, I don't think it's too bad for them. But it is funny. Okay, so we have run out of time as ever. Um, so next week we'll talk about the other three parts of the video. That's the middle ice cream. And of course, we're going to talk about that ridiculously expensive ice cream at the end. And um, if you have any ice cream in the meantime, think about what flavour it is, whether you like it. And if you've ever had an ice cream that's an unusual flavour, Think about that for next time. Um, what's the most unusual flavour ice cream you've ever had? Because there's a couple in there I've never had and I never will have. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoyed the session. Sarah, um, just an hour earlier. Come in an hour earlier. Same link as this one. You can re-register if you want, but there's no need. If you keep the link, uh, the link shouldn't change next week. Do remember to clear your cash, okay? And don't forget, if you want to come and actually speak, there are a limited number of speaking places um, or seats, as I like to call them, but you just have to click on uh, Request to Speak button and then get the app, which will be offered to you once you've been accepted to speak. And then... Um, it just goes through the test, blah de blah There is now, a, oh, by the way, yeah, 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 yeah. There's a page. There's a page on the website uh, about Webinar Jam, okay? So I'll give you the link. It tells you a little bit about the requirements, okay? Um, so if you go to the website and you go to chat, um, let me just show you. In fact, I'll, I'll do a quick screen share of it. Okay, so go to the website, go to chat. Okay, and then if you go to English, you see it there, English practice webinars. This is when April finds a spelling mistake. <laughs> okay, learn English in webinars. It's a new page and it will show you what you need to do. Okay, what we do. In my sessions, in Aladdin's sessions, there might be some more sessions coming as well and what you need to do to enter the session, okay? There's also, if you're having any issues, um, there are a couple of pages um, that I'm not sure if I've put the links in, but they will be there. I think I've put the links in. Did I get the links in? But anyhow, it, it tells you a little bit about what you'll need to do to join us as a speaker, you can join listening at any point. It's fine. Come, go, late, early, doesn't matter. Um, you're welcome to just listen. You can do that on most platforms, your smartphone, your tablet. But if you want to come and speak, then you will need to be on a laptop or PC. So it will explain all of that. Okay. And thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll carry on next week. Same topic. So if you haven't watched the video yet, you've got a chance to catch up, okay? The link should stay the same. Now I'm not going to say all the time, Sarah. 
<laughs> That's too much of a commitment. But whilst these sessions are running at this time with this name, the link will be the same. Keep an eye on the calendar. Uh, and keep an eye on the forum because, of course, if it does change, um, for example, if webinar software changes as it did a few months ago, then we have to recreate the room and we have to um, uh, give it a new link, etc. But for now, yes, this link will be the same for this session. The other sessions have different links, but the links, once you're in, you can join at any time. Okay. Now, if you want the reminder, you have to re-register each time. But as long as you've got it in your diary to come along, use that link at the right time, then you're fine. Just click on the link. It will bring you to us. And if you find something weird, then you'll know it's changed. Go to the calendar, check on the forum. OK. OK, good. Thank you very much, Shiny. I'll see you too. And uh, thanks, Monique. And thank you, kinder Hermina Traum. <laughs> Thanks, Rima Marco. <laughs> Thank you, April, for keeping one name. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next session, okay? Don't forget... Um... You, have to, you have to edit yep. your uh, site again, then. Yes. About the webinar. Because yes, of... again. <laughs> I know. Type mic when you enter the room. Ah, that's true. Yes, but you do type mic when you... Mic just means I want to say something, yeah? Type mic when yeah i should change that shouldn't i uh type mic when you've been accepted to speak i'll change that thanks cheers <laughs> i knew you'd find something <laughs> okay um marion will be in skype in 20 minutes so if you want to join if you're not in the wars group in skype uh, and you want to join i'm going to go over to skype now and i will add anybody uh who wants to join okay so Take care and have fun with Marianne. I'll see you all later. Bye.